How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to Brain Smasher's channel of Hessian filth. My name is Brain Smasher. It's a lovely spring day outside, and I decided to spend a good amount of time sequestered to my dank basement with my collection because I got a little bit of a beef. I've had this beef for a really long time, and I've always wanted to do something where I made an opinion piece about this and used, uh, you know, editing to put together my case, which will prove once and for all that Peter Tadgren pretty much did a really good job of ruining my favorite bands back in the late 90s and early 2000s. So, Peter Tetkrin is a talented multi-instrumentalist and producer, mixer. He ran Abyss Studios for the longest time. In fact, I'm sure he's still active recording bands. Um, the thing is, though, he started out recording bands back in 95 or so and did a great job. There's definitely no shortage of evidence that Peter Tetkrin did a really good job of recording bands and helping them achieve a sound that worked well with their overall style. And from each album back in the time, 1995 or so, they didn't sound the same. You know, a, a band comes into the studio and you start from scratch and you listen to a band's previous material and at least I would think you would, uh, you know, find out what kind of gear they have and listen to what kind of sound that they want to achieve and do something about that to help them get the most advantageous atmosphere and representation of their instruments and skills as possible. So what I'm going to do with this video here, it's a little bit different than what I usually do, is play you a couple of clips that prove what I'm talking about after the fact. So here I want to play you clips from Algeon's Oi My Algae You. Arcanum's Friend Martyr, and Dawn's <laughs> Sorg Parsfarte Vigorflow. So there, as you can see, three different records all sound great, as far as I'm concerned, and they don't sound all similar to one another, and they were all recorded in 1995. So yeah, that was a fine example. I never really honestly realized that they were done by Peter Tatkin until I did this video and started compiling uh, a list of albums that he put together, or that he recorded back then, and it just goes to show that, like, I, I guess, honestly, you know, there's some producers who would do such a good job that you find it remarkable and think, wow, who did this? I can't imagine who did this. Or there's some who have, like, such a signature sound that when you pop on an album, you're like, oh, thank fucking hell that these, this band is recording with this guy because he knows exactly what he's doing. But then there's a style of producer where I feel like you shouldn't honestly think about the fact that there is someone behind the glass doing the buttons and flipping all the knobs and switches and stuff because they did such a good job of representing the way that the band should be represented and you wouldn't even think about the fact that there's a studio involved because they're representing the atmosphere so thoroughly and so vividly that it doesn't even come to mind. And so, I guess I don't know where I was going with that. However. Here's the next couple of 
examples that Peter Deckard was doing a great job recording albums, even even still. So here's a clip from Flesh Crawl, A Canterous Quintet, and Edge of Sanity's Infernal that all sound different and good. So that brings us to Doomsday, as far as I'm concerned. Now, I don't want to dog on this album, I'll just say it, 1997, Demi Borger's Enthroned Darkness Triumphant is where it really all went to hell, as far as I'm concerned. I love that album, I think it's a really good album. But as far as production-wise, it did pretty much work for Demi Borger's aesthetic at the time. If you think about it, I think what was really going on, and I've been thinking about this quite a bit, is that Nuclear Blast and all the big labels, um, Relapse, saw that the record industry was maybe a little bit failing, metal was kind of on its last dregs, and I think what they were kind of doing was deciding to make superstars out of bands that were underground up until that point. They put a lot of money into Demi Borger, who were otherwise just fairly unknown in the black metal realm, and you know, push a bunch of money into them, throw them into a studio, give them a million dollar sound, and just you know, essentially make an album that couldn't fucking fail. Because at this point in the late '90s, I feel like everyone who in metal was listening to stuff like Death, Amorphous, your Sam Ales, your Incantations and whatnot. Lots of big time death metal kind of stuff. And this was the first time someone took a risk at pushing black metal up there into all the magazines and out there with a million dollar studio sound so that they could really play hardball with the big bands that everyone was listening to, the bolt throwers and shit like that throughout that time. So they took Demi Borger, an unknown Norwegian black metal band. I know you could argue that we were kind of unknown. Stormblast was on Cacophonous. Still, Cacophonous was not a big label back then, as far as I'm concerned. But okay, let's listen to a clip from Nibby Borger's Enthroned Darkness Triumphant. And so now... It all went to shit. Bands who were otherwise already pretty decent and had sounds that were different and eclectic and charismatic of their personality and sound now entered Abyss Studios and sounded exactly the same as Demi Borger's in Throne Darkness Triumphant. Case in point now, Hypocrisy is the final chapter Dark Funerals, Vobiscum Satanus, Enslaved, Bloodham, Dawn, Slaughter Sun, and Marduk's Nightwing. Again, I'm not speaking to the overall music of these albums, but I have always had a hard time fully embracing these albums because they sound so fucking plastic and generic and just the same as all these other fucking albums that were coming out at the same time. So let's have a listen.
So there I hope you can see there's a vast change from all the bands that were before Dimmy Borgers and Throne Darkness Triumphant till now. And it even goes further on into 1998 with Withered Beauty, Satogawa, Thurfing, and Immortals at the Heart of Winter, and even I threw in Triumphator's Wings of the Antichrist. The shit train just keeps on rolling with Marduk, Panzer Division Marduk, Borknagars, Quintessence, and Immortals Damned in Black, and I don't even have a clip from it, but further and further and further on I stopped because honestly I was getting a headache from listening to the same fucking record over and over and over and over again. These bands sound exactly the fucking same as all the other ones that were recorded at Abyss Studios in the late 90s. Now one thing I will say is that Marduk's Panzer Division Marduk I think, for some reason, I'm able to kind of forgive that one. And it's not that I think that it sounds any different from all these other fucking albums that I've listed and given clips of. It just kind of tends to work with that album's ferocity and just aggressiveness overall. So here's a couple more clips. So there you have it. In a way, I kind of feel like this overall problem led to the demise of a lot of charismatic black metal bands who had enjoyed good albums with interesting production in the early to mid 90s. And toward the end, everybody was just shoving these bands into Abyss Studios to make million dollar, million dollar <laughs> albums out of these guys. And to me, they just sound really fucking phony and stupid. And, and honestly, that is how I think of the end of 90s black metal. And that's kind of where it all just went. And from that grave were born bands like Death Spell Omega, uh, Vindir, Falkenbach, stuff like that. Bands with a lot of personality who didn't you know, weren't hindered by a shitty studio like this. Now, I just, it still just boggles my mind, like how did such a big name producer wind up doing the same fucking thing with so many different albums? I just, I will never understand it. And honestly, I'm not knocking the guy Peter Tackman as a person. I'm sure he's a cool dude. I actually, in fact, I've met him back in 97, had a little chat about Algeon, actually. And I never expected this to, like, to be making this fucking video complaining about what probably bought, brought him so much fame and uh, his studio so much notoriety back in the day. It's just that I could never get over how fucking similar all these albums have sounded. Just so dry, plastic, and boring. Just like the New Burgers and Throne Darkness Triumphant. Um... Thanks for listening, if you did. Um, don't expect, I guess, a lot more videos like this. I don't intend to be some kind of rant maniac, but I've seriously had this beef on the back of my tongue for uh, going on 20 years now or so. So let me know what you think in the description down below. 
what are some albums that you think could sound a little bit better if they were produced by someone with a little bit more ingenuity or creativity? What are some albums that you think are perfect except for the production values on them? What do you think of any of the albums that I put in this video? Thanks a lot for watching. Have a good one.